guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tanya, and for those of you who are new, welcome. I am gonna be filming today a video you guys have been requesting a lot on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on there, I'm gonna be linking it down in the description because I'm very active there. But during my pregnancy, which was less than three weeks ago, I filmed some videos on what to take to the hospital for mom, what to take for your baby, and a bunch of other videos pregnancy related. Uh, but now that I already went through the experience, I did find out that I was so wrong with so many things that I thought I was gonna need. So you guys were asking me how accurate it was or if I could please do an updated version on what I actually used. So I'm gonna be doing that today and telling you guys all in one video what is important for mom, what is important for baby, at least in my case, and the things that you totally do not need at the hospital. Also, in my defense, I thought I was going to be staying at the hospital for a week because I was planning on a c-section. That's a whole another story and I made a whole video on it. So you can also go into my channel and watch that if you're interested. But I did think I was going to be having a c-section and staying at the hospital for five days, which was what my doctor had told me uh, was the rule here in Spain. But since that all changed and I ended up having a natural birth during this whole coronavirus situation, I only ended up staying for two days at the hospital. So obviously the bag I had prepared had too many things that I didn't even take out. So this is gonna be a packing light version of for the hospital and for baby. So as I said, I'm gonna be doing the mom and the baby version all in this video just because it's gonna be a list that's a lot shorter than the other ones. So I'm just gonna go right to it. This is what I think is essential for moms to pack and what I actually used. So starting out with where to take your stuff. Um, I did tell you guys that I was going to take a suitcase because I had so much stuff. But now that I see what I actually use, I could have totally just gotten away with a backpack or a small bag. But that's up to you. So for mom, in my case, they did not give me a gown like right after the birth. So when I got to my room, I was just like in the really dirty clothing that I gave birth with. So what the nurses did was that they helped me get like in big hospital diapers, like big ones. And they told me like to take out one of my shirts. So I did use a spaghetti strap, like really comfortable shirt, stretchy so that I could easily nurse him with and a nursing bra. And the room was a lot warmer than what I thought it would be. Um, usually you would think that hospitals are really cold, but I was told that in the baby area in the hospital They warm it up exactly because of that. So actually I was just in the spaghetti strap shirt <laughs> The diapers and a zip up hoodie, which I ended up just taking off But yeah, just a shirt for the for the first day that has easy access is the most important thing Then the next morning this is obviously because I was feeling really well I didn't tear or I wasn't feeling much pain. So I did wake up in the morning and took a shower so I didn't want to put on the huge granny panties that they gave me so I took my own so this is something that I think is important and I brought one just to show you guys they're obviously not cute but as far as diapers go they're like the best option like these <laughs> so they are kind of like underwear but a diaper built in and they were really useful just like to feel a bit better than the ones that the hospital gave me so i put these on the next morning and the spanx that you guys know that i love so they look like this because i noticed i've never shown you guys up here And I put them on just because, as I said, I was already feeling really good. And they're not really tight, but they just helped me like feel more put together and comfortable. So on top of the underwear, I put this on. It's not like a waist train or anything because it's not too tight, as I said, but it does help a lot. So I definitely took this and I wore the nursing bra. So those were basically like the only types of clothing I took. I think uh, two pairs of, uh, of everything. So then my outfits would be the diaper, this uh, Spanx, then the nursing bra. And on top, if I wanted to look like more put together, uh, I would put on or the zip sweater or an open cardigan, I think is what, how you call them. I have one right over here like this. So you guys know I always wear black, but it would be like everything would be black underneath and this thing, just because I don't like robes, but it's kind of like the style. 
and it would make me feel a lot more comfortable just when I didn't want to be like only in my bra. So then in summary, just to show you guys real quick what my outfits look like. They were really comfy. It was this. With this. With this. And this on top. Then definitely I would say the slippers are a must because when you're walking around in the room like to change him or walk to the shower um, The floor is cold. So yeah, the slippers I would definitely take and maybe some socks Sorry, I just took like a 30 minute break because my baby was hungry, but I'm back um, So I was telling you guys about the clothing part of what I actually used at the hospital So now I am gonna tell you the next part because you actually don't need that much and other than clothing, the other things that I did use were uh, the stretch mark cream just because I was so used to applying it after the shower every day uh, that once the baby was out, the skin is still saggy and it's still big and I have heard a lot of moms that say that they didn't get any stretch marks but once their baby came out, the change in size caused some stretch marks. So after the shower, I did apply a bit of the stretch mark cream. So it's important for you to take that if you want to prevent it as well. Um, also, in case your hospital doesn't give you any shampoo, face cream, toothbrush, uh, toothpaste, the basic things that you would take on a trip. And I didn't end up using the facial wipes because I was feeling okay to stand up and take a shower. But if you're not sure how it's gonna be, I do recommend that you take that definitely because being in bed and not being able to go wash your face or take a shower, that is definitely a lifesaver, I think. So I did not personally use them, but I think it's a good idea to take just in case. And then two things that are that I have not seen on most people's list, but really helped me were um, the really long phone charger just because you don't know where the outlet is going to be. In my case, it was on the other side of the room, so I was so thankful that I took that. Um, a really long one just so that I could stay in bed and not be moving too much, like to reach over to where it's charging. Um, and this other thing that I had bought to have on the next to our bed. In the hospital, the light was like really strong and then at night it was like totally dark. So um, I wanted to be able to see my baby at night, but not to have like a really intense light right in our face so that we could sleep. So I bought this on Amazon. It's like a touch light. Look, so it has this. You touch it once, twice, and you can change the colors. Blue, purple, like you can turn on to any of these colors. One second. like purple blue <laughs> you get it so this was super useful i actually had it right next to my bed like there was like a little bedside table like this so i would just turn it on and keep it on all night and turn off the lights so it's like really a really comfortable light that is not too intense on your face but you can use to see your baby during the night and then i'm still using this um like right next to my bed because we're co-sleeping so i use this lamp to be able to see him all throughout the night it's so it's not pitch dark okay so those are the things that i actually used for myself in my hospital bag compared to all the other things that i <laughs> told you guys on the other video um some of the things that i did not use were the makeup bag because since we're in the middle of the coronavirus thing, we had no visitors. Uh, it was just two days. And honestly, I just felt like it was really unnecessary to put on makeup. So um, I did not use the makeup at all. Then the breast pump, I was also planning on taking. But I didn't really know how the milk worked during the first days. You get a little bit of colostrum come out during the first day and on the second day a bit more than on the third day it's increasing and then like on the fourth day my milk did come in so the breast pump was kind of unnecessary because i was just letting him and like nature do its own thing and let it come out on its own um i did not have to use the breast pump and then totally unnecessary were the the breast pads because just until now that it's been almost three weeks since he was born, I'm just starting to use the breast pads because the milk is like increasing its amount. But at the very beginning, I barely could get like some drops of colostrum out. So the breast pads were obviously unnecessary because it's not like I was wetting my bras or anything yet. So yeah, that is not something I think you should take to the hospital. And now continuing to the baby 
bag, which is even less than what you need for yourself, is the following. So definitely this bag. I'm obsessed with it. It's from Hap Brand. You guys know I bought it and I was so excited to try it out. It's where I took all of his things and what I'm going to be using for his diaper bag as well. So yeah, check this out because I love this brand. And then basically for a newborn, you don't need much. What I used was the following list. Number one, diapers size zero and size one. I personally used size zero because my baby was really small. So he was born at 38 weeks and was 2.9 kilograms, which is this in pounds. I don't know it by memory, but he was very small. So the size one diapers were too small for him. So he was using size zero. So definitely take a pair of those because the hospital only had size one. Um, so just if you want him to be a bit more comfortable and to have like diapers that actually fit, take some of those. Uh, next, I took a bunch of outfits for him, but honestly, you're just like getting used to having a baby. It's my first, so I was barely like learning how to hold him, learning how to breastfeed. And putting on outfits was like not the most practical time to do that. So the only thing I used and during those days were I think two or three outfits. Um, they were onesies and what I found was very useful was the type that covers their hands. So as I said before, it's not super cold inside the room, but uh, the onesies with long sleeves are like just comfortable because of this, because they can cover their hands and he was born with really long nails. So to prevent him from scratching his face, which he, which he did like a few times, he just likes to have his hands around his face a lot. So he would like scratch it whenever he didn't have the little um, gloves on. So if you don't have any of those, it's not like you need to go out and buy it. You can also use mittens or also I've heard a lot of people recommend putting the socks on their hands. So yeah, you can consider taking some of those to cover their hands. Um, also, I have heard from a lot of people that it's not good to always have their hands covered just because it doesn't like allow them, I think, to develop their senses or something like that. But well, it's not like it's forever. Once we got home and got like more used to everything, I did use the electric nail filer I had told you guys about, which wasn't necessary to take to the hospital because again, it was too soon and it was like not the right place to do it. So um, if I were you, I would definitely just take something to cover their hands during the hospital. And then once you get home, you can take care of their nails. I did take socks for him because I was just scared that he would get cold, but that's up to you. Um, actually, I took socks and hats. I used the hat only the first day just because I found it a little more uncomfortable. It would keep coming off and he was just so small, but uh, those are optional stuff. And the one thing that I found the most necessary for him was even like if you don't want to put a onesie on them, there's this thing I have that is super, super practical. It's from a brand called Cover Me Ponchos. And look, it's actually super multi-use. You can use it for yourself when you're breastfeeding, or you can use it as a swaddle or as a blanket or to cover the bassinet. I love it. It's super stretchy. And I used this. Um, I'm going to show you guys a picture at the hospital. And since it's so stretchy, it worked like to cover him like a blanket and use like a kind of like a swaddle and he actually really liked to be put up like in a little ball so definitely if you're not going to take many outfits take these things i actually have a discount code for this brand but if you have any other it's a really good option just to like have them covered up it's not too warm so it won't, he won't get super hot i know most moms worry that the, their babies are gonna get cold so it's just something to put them in to have them covered and at the same time i feel like it's super comfortable so definitely check these out and then last but not least the hospital did give this to us but it's for their little umbilical cord stump i think that's how it's called um they recommended that you know that during the first days it hasn't fallen off so the doctor told us the nurse actually told us that we had to apply a cotton swab with alcohol on it every time we changed his diaper so we did and it fell off on the third day which i think is really good because it usually takes like up to a week two weeks um so what the alcohol does is it dries it up so definitely ask your doctor this is not medical advice i'm just telling you guys what we did 
um, but if you want to take some alcohol to ask about it and have it handy in case they give you the green light or maybe even your hospital can provide some for you um, that helped our baby's belly button stump heal really quickly and then the things that I did not use at all were the really complicated swaddles just because everything is so new you're getting used to your baby you're not like in the most comfortable position to be swaddling or to put them and make the whole triangle thing so those swaddles i took definitely i didn't use i just used like the little bear with velcro one that was really good then i definitely took too many outfits but then again i thought i was gonna stay for five days and only ended up staying two so consider having enough but not taking too many outfits and the nose frito which i said i was gonna take to clean his boogers um wasn't necessary because i think it's too soon to be doing that um at least my baby didn't get a stuffy nose until he got home i think because of the change in environment and temperatures so i definitely did not use that either so yeah guys as you can see this is a lot shorter than both videos i made of what's in my hospital bag and what to pack for baby this is a more updated version for a quick stay at the hospital as mine was and I hope it works for you guys. It gives you a bit more ideas. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your experience. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Bye!